night, guys. It is just a dreary, drizzly, gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have made it to uh, somehow stumbled into Saturday morning, December 28th, 2019. And uh, the final weekend of 2019 before 2020 blows up in our face. So this is probably as good a time as any to stumble into Collapse Chronicles here on YouTube. My name is Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do every day, and that's gearing up for the onslaught of Collapse, getting ready to hit us in the face in the 2020s which could be one of the most important decades in the history of, the, of humanity since we climbed down from the trees. But before we take a peek into what we can expect unfolding, uh, I just want to send out a big thank you to two of my kind-hearted listeners here on Collapse Chronicles. That would be Emily Lyons and Roger Hofer, Emily and Roger, to both of you, I really, really appreciate the kind donations to my PayPal account here on Collapse Chronicles and to anyone who has ever, ever donated to the calls and supported whatever it is that I do here on YouTube to keep you informed, if not entertained, I really, really do appreciate it, guys. So anyway, there is so much to choose from since my Alert Tribes members, uh, you guys really, uh, really keeping me on my toes, sending me all of these uh, stories to choose from. But this one, and I am sorry I can't remember which one of you sent this to me, from the good old BBC News, uh, <laughs> you talk about some dot connecting, you know, uh, one thing I try to do here on this channel is connect dots, and I really want to uh, send some kudos for the BBC for connecting the dots of uh, how this planet will go into collapse overdrive. Uh, as we move into the 2020s, uh, where we look at Russia's plan for Arctic coal for India risks pollution. Yeah, risks pollution. I bet it does. So this is a long involved story. I'm going to put the link on it uh, for you to read yourself. Talking about... Uh, Russia mining for coal in the Arctic to send to India to burn for power. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there you go. Okay, take it away, BBC, and uh, give us this road map to catastrophe. Natural riches come in two conflicting types in Russia's Arctic North valuable minerals, and spectacular wildlife. But sadly, for many threatened species of the spectacular wildlife, the decline in Arctic sea ice has created a new economic opportunity in Russia in their remote habitat. In a decree last year, President Vladimir Putin ordered Russian firms, the president ordered private corporations, that's what it sounds like they're saying here, Putin ordered Russian firms to boost cargo traffic on the northern sea route to an annual 80 million tons by the year 2024. So, uh, in the next four years, we will have 80 million 
tons of cargo uh, running through this new sea lane being opened uh, by the collapsing Arctic sea ice. Uh, there you go. Uh, ambitious energy cooperation deals. You know, at the same time that Putin was saying this, imagine this dot. Ambitious energy cooperation deals were signed with India in Vladivostok in Russia's Far East in October. Yes, one, one of these energy cooperation deals between uh, Russia and India centers on a giant open cast coal mining project in Tarmir Peninsula in the far north of central Siberia. The area is rich in high quality coking coal. Whoa, hello. Mine is my, uh, my gorilla tape that's holding up my blinds, you know, to, to shield me from Mad Max. My gorilla tape just collapsed on my blinds as my bedroom falls apart. Anyway, where were we? The area is rich in high quality coking coal called anthracite, used to make steel and aluminum. So I guess this coal is not only going to be burned for power generation, but it's heading to Indian steel and aluminum mills as India tries to catch up with the rest of the world, producing steel and aluminum and this doesn't even count where they're getting their iron ore and their bauxite from all over the planet. Dharmendra Pradhan, India's Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, said, quote, We are the second largest coal importer in the world. Surely China is the number one. We are the second largest coal importer in the world, and we intend to achieve production of 3 million tons of steel per year by 2030. So we need to increase our coal supplies. Close quote. But Tarmir Peninsula is a haven for wildlife. It has Russia's largest nature reserve, the Bolshoi Archensky, covering 4.2 million hectares. That's about 10 million acres, otherwise known as 16,000 square miles. On TV, President Putin presents himself as a caring conservationist, famously relaxing in Siberia's unspoiled wilderness, but he is also championing the expansion of fossil fuel projects in that wilderness. And if this is reminding you of anybody, that would be our president, Donald Trump, everything that uh, you can be that that the BBC is talking about uh, with Putin in Siberia could be said about Trump, uh, you know, doing everything he can to open up uh, the Arctic wildlife, uh, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, to uh, oil drilling. Uh, this is the you, you know. Trump and Putin, anybody who does not understand the bromance, it is, it, they are two peas in the same pod. <clears throat> Russia is also boosting its trade with China, India, and other growing Asian markets hungry for raw materials. Coal is to contribute to meeting that 80 million ton target for Arctic deliveries. You know, four years from now, 
which will go via Russia's Far East, but such shipments pose considerable risks. Despite global warming, icebreakers still play a key role as winter temperatures plunge below minus 20 C. Remote settlements lack equipment to deal with any pollution emergency. Hmm. And long voyages to India will mean more greenhouse gas emissions from shipping. The Arctic is estimated to hold 72% of Russia's total gas reserves. Oil and gas mega projects are far advanced further west, notably on the Yamal Peninsula. In Tamir, the coastal tundra, marshland with permanently frozen subsoil, oh yeah, <coughs> called temporarily frozen subsoil, <coughs> is a nesting ground for migratory birds. <clears throat> Polar bears come ashore on ta Tarmir, while inland vast reindeer herds roam and snowy owls hunt lemmings. <clears throat> Along with <clears throat> Along with the pollution threat <clears throat> being raised by all of this planet eating, reindeer are now seriously threatened by poaching. <clears throat> says Alexei Nizhnikov, a conservationist with World Wildlife Fund, quote, developing new projects in such an ecologically, ecologically sensitive area is madness, he told the BBC. Do you think so? There is already pollution with heavy metals and sulfur dioxide around the city of Norilsk from an ore smelter there. <clears throat> A Greenpeace study published in August 2019 said, quote, in terms of individual hot spots, the Norilsk smelter complex continues to be the largest sulfur dioxide emission hotspot in the world, close quote. And surprisingly enough, it also found India to be the world's top sulfur dioxide emitter. Hmm, are we getting some dots being drawn here? Now, a bay just south of Dixon, a tiny weather-beaten port, and one of the world's most remote settlements is a new ecological danger zone. An anthracite coal field lies at Medusa Bay, part of the Bolshoi Achetsky Nature Reserve. The bay attacked attracts, yeah, attacks. The bay attracts big flocks of birds, including six rare or endangered species. Do you think so? Uh, the zone why, where mining and related construction are now banned was reduced to 2,800 acres for more than 12, it was basically cut in half, uh, this, this protected zone, you know, kind of like Donald Trump cutting uh, those places, those national monuments in Utah, in this country, you know, to, uh, as part of this plan, of course, Russia just had to go in there and cut this environmentally protected zone in half. Uh, that government move in July came despite a plea from the ministry itself and the Tarmir Nature Reserve Authority to cite a planned 
new coal terminal well away from the reserve. Uh, yep. Uh, Greenpeace says the new terminal is just one kilometer. That's a little over a half mile from the nature reserve. Uh, quoting the Greenpeace legal complaint, quote, at that distance, when coal is loaded at the terminal, coal dust will pour down onto the nature reserve. Uh, in line with Mr. Putin's Arctic ambitions, uh, Vostagal is developing the Medusa Bay coal field in two coal terminals for loading onto ships. Uh, where, you know, one kilometer from uh, the protected wildlife reserve, this uh, planet eater plans to export 20 million tons of coal from there by 2024. Um, and just two kilometers from the open cast coal mine stands an international bird monitoring center. Uh, this Dr. Sergei Karbanov was there last year where coal dust from the mine <clears throat> had already reached as far as Dixon, he told the BBC. <coughs> the bird populations are in danger. I am worried about their future, he said. That place has lots of coal, and it's apparently easy and profitable to mine it. Close quote. Yes, do you think so? Uh, strategic prioritize, however, are driving this mining and energy extraction in the polar wilderness. Russia is now the third largest coal exporter with 210 million tons uh, exported in 2018 after Indonesia, which exported 439 million tons, and Australia, you know, which is in flames today, exported 382 million tons. The World Coal Association reports. Meanwhile, India has become increasingly dependent on imported coking coal for metallurgy, you know, to make steel and aluminum. Uh, so Russia aims to boost its coal exports to India sixfold by 2025 to 28 million tons annually. And uh, Mr. Chandra, you know, the oil and gas minister in India, told the BBC such a volume was, quote, realistic. It's not massive by international standards. Yes, China consumes vastly more coking coal than that every year. Hmm. He also noted that as far back as the 1970s, the then communist Russia, Russian state had been helping India to industrialize. Quote, India's cooperation with Russia is deeper than with other coal exporting countries. Russia is a reliable partner, and there are lots of other commercial deals with Russia. Hmm. Moreover, he said, imagine this, quote, renewable energy is not replacing traditional power sources any 
time soon in India. Close quote. So guys, if uh, you failed to connect about a hundred dots in that article right here in the mainstream media in the closing days of 2019, I don't know what more I can do to help the BBC connect those dots for you. Uh, it is full steam ahead with uh, with fossil fuel and and everything else uh, in the most remote regions of the planet. It is full steam ahead to bring every ounce and drop of fossil fuels out of the ground while we still can. It is, it is going to be a full steam bulldozer until we smack right up to that brick wall called the limits to growth. There is exactly zero, zero sign that there is, that there is any hope for turning this freight train around. This, tr this freight train is gaining speed with every single day, and uh, will we or will we not hit the brick wall in the 2020s and send this whole house of cards tumbling down? Stay tuned uh, here at Collapse Chronicles for... Uh, the chronicle of this. And speaking of staying tuned, I am thrilled to report I will be publishing my interview I had last week with ecologist William Rees. I'm going to let uh, William Rees close out Collapse Chronicles for, tw for the final, for the final uh, chronicle of the collapse. So do listen. I will be posting that tomorrow. So by all means, listen to that. And if you enjoyed this dot connecting, please take a few seconds to thumb up this video. If you did not enjoy it, please take a few seconds to thumb it down. And by all means, please subscribe over here to Collapse Chronicles because I assure you there is going to be a lot more dot connecting where this came from as 2020 looms in four days. Get out there and enjoy Girl Scout cookie time while you still can. Bye, guys.